So I just want to thank everyone so much for joining us today. Um, as I'm sure you all know, RERM is one of our um, very valued partners and vendors with us here at Radius. And so um, we have Heidi with us today. Um, she's a senior VP of sales over at RERM. And so she's going to be uh, just walking through um, some of the legal defense and services that RERM can provide for you and your business. And so with that, I'll let Heidi take it away. Thank you so much. Um, so real estate risk management, that's what RERM stands for. And what we are is legal defense and service for real estate licensees. Um, you practice contract law on behalf of your clients. You have fiduciary duty to act in their best interest. And what ends up happening is that that can be construed to sometimes giving legal advice or you know, trying to do something in the real estate transaction where guidance from an attorney might be needed or necessary. Um, and so that's really what RERM does. And what I'm going to do this morning is go over a couple of areas that RERM provides to make sure that real estate professionals aren't stepping into another area of expertise rather than you know, just being a real estate professional, you're not trying to go into the legal sector of it. So like other things, if you needed a roof inspection, you would go to a certified contractor roofing uh, contractor. If you needed a title report, you would go to a title company. If you needed legal advice or your clients need legal advice, you would go to a attorney because <laughs> you can't give them that type of legal advice or those answers. So with that said, the first question is, can an agent answer a um, question that could classify as legal advice to a buyer or seller? Absolutely not. This is considered the unlicensed practice of law, which is actual term, UPL, on the state, uh, the state board for attorneys that you have to be very careful about. And if you go and you look on the state bar's website, you'll have seen infractions against real estate professionals and other professionals that went into that gray area. So you don't want to do that. Now, what's considered giving you legal advice? Um, answering if your client should or should not initial the arbitration clause, um, telling your client if they have any type of recourse in a contract over a deposit or a situation. Um, going over different disclosure matters and giving your clients verbiage for a disclosure. You can't do that. That's considered giving legal advice, telling your clients about title, tax law, you know, all of those things. So who do you refer your client to when they have a legal question? Well, I hope you're referring them to an attorney that specializes in that area of law. So if it's a tax question, they're going to a tax attorney or a CPA. If it's a question, um, regarding a situation about sewer lateral, that might be a situation in the Bay Area, Northern California, or whether it's a situation about Montecito where there were mudslides years ago, or there was a fire in that area. They're going to an attorney that's familiar with that area and the best recourse for disclosure to make sure that you're protected and your client's protected. So you definitely want to go to an attorney that's an expert in that area and knowledge of that field or that matter. Um, now, one of the things that most brokers and agents don't, um, they're not prepared for in some situations or the buyer or seller aren't prepared for is if there's going to be a dispute over the deposit, the contract, the earnest money deposit over cancellation and who's entitled to that deposit, or if there's going to be a matter that comes up after the close of escrow where they discover that there's a problem, um, something that's leaking in the house or something that breaks in the house or something that wasn't disclosed to them, an HOA assessment, or all of those things that can come up where does the client start to resolve their issue? Well, per the California Residential Purchase Agreement, where they start is mediation. That is a standardized clause in the purchase agreement, and the parties have to start there before going to arbitration or litigation, depending on what they agree to in that contract between the parties. Um, so it's very important that um, clients understand the mediation provision and that it has to be satisfied and met 
before moving forward to the next legal recourse. What they're not prepared for is the cost. So if you go to California Association of Realtors or you go to any other venue that provides formal mediation, it can cost thousands of dollars for a session just to satisfy that provision, even if they don't meet a mutual uh, resolution at the time of that session. So when these things come up, buyers and sellers aren't prepared to spend money just to resolve their matter. So that's where RERM, we come into play. And a couple of things that we do to safeguard our real estate professionals and prevent issues from getting costly or expensive. First, anytime one of our agents is working with a buyer or seller, so you're talking to them about real estate, you're talking to them about putting their home on the market, it's an interest of them to buy a home or sell their home. When you start verbally communicating with this client, that's when you have to be very careful. Because if they start asking you questions about anything to do with the purchase or sale of real estate that can go into that legal area, they need to talk to an attorney. So what we do to make sure that our real estate professionals have that support with your clients is the minute you have an agency disclosure, a listing agreement, um, a BRBA, BRBC agreement, um, you've written an offer to purchase, once that is done and you're representing that client, they then have access to RERM's attorneys to get their legal questions answered. So we have a panel of over 800 attorneys that practice in many areas of law, and they can answer any type of legal question that your client has before, during, and for one year after the close of escrow. It is only for non-dispute questions. So if a client ever contacts us and says, hey, I want to sue Al, sorry Al, got to gotta pick on you for a second, then right. we're not going to send them to an attorney to take legal recourse against Al. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to tell them that's not the type of consultation that we deal with. But if there is a situation that turns into a legal matter, or it could turn into a legal matter, I should say, um, we provide certified mediators to work between the buyer and seller for deposit disputes or any problem after the close of escrow to try to bring it to resolution. Our mediation services satisfy the provision, but they're not going to cost your clients thousands of dollars. And so it's very effective to be able to try to reach a mutual decision on getting a problem fixed with the other party. And when I say other party, it can be a third party, somebody that did a repair on the property that didn't do a proper repair during the transaction or did prior work. Um, it can be with an HOA. It can be with a title company. It can be with any other company that's involved in that dispute where they would be required or needed to mediate to resolve that problem. So hey, Heidi, real quick. So am I, the, am I the only person on this call that's getting this information? Um, no, we I, have we have um, another agent that's on this call as well. Okay, okay. yeah, because I, I already went through all this with, um, I forgot her name in San Francisco with the with the attorney, with legal. Um, okay. But but the reason why I was asking is because I was asking Jennifer, um, well, Jessica, what is the form? Is the form... At the beginning, when we when we sign a listing agreement with a client, so that's kind of like where I'm like, okay, but if there's somebody else on the call, continue. Oh, it's okay. So, so how RERM implements for you as an agent, if you want to sign up with our program, is that you would fill out an enrollment form. If you're on a team, then everybody on your team would be part of uh, enrollment with our program. So it does require everybody. Once you're enrolled with us then all of your clients that you're working with at the time and all of your future clients, once you have a representation agreement in place, that gives them access to RERM's attorneys to get legal advice. Perfect. Uh, that's, all, yeah. that's what I needed. Perfect. And then okay. mediation services, if anything comes up over a deposit dispute or for anything that comes up after the close of escrow. Okay. Uh, so that's when that starts. This is a copy of the marketing plan that you would drop your information right. in and you can use with clients. Um, 
let me go ahead and jump over to broker agent benefits because I'm not sure if that's something that um, that you have fully um, talked to them about, Jessica. So we also provide attorneys for you, which is really important. So this morning, I actually got a call from an agent. It was over the seller's in a bearing wall that had been removed. And the contractor that did the removal is telling the clients that it wasn't a low bearing wall. The agent saying, you know, I'm not sure, I can't be an expert, I can't give you, you know, legal advice, you should definitely seek out a structural engineer to go ahead and get, you know, a report on that. So the sellers do, they don't like what they hear, and they call the agent and they're like, this is your fault, we shouldn't have gone to that structural engineer as you encouraged, and now I'm upset with you. The problem with that is that the agent has knowledge, so she has liability of this situation, right? And she needs to disclose everything she knows. The sellers also have an obligation to disclose, but because they don't want it to affect the desirability of the property for a buyer, they want to withhold information. So two types of legal advice that we're going to provide there. I told her your client needs to call in and get legal advice based off of what their obligation is as a seller for disclosure. You also need to call in and get legal advice with our attorney to make sure that any, any liability that you have, you're with counsel, they're aware of it and they're helping you disclose this accurately. So in case the buyer who purchases the home has an issue at a later time, you know, they're not discovering something that wasn't disclosed to them, which is what they have the most right to sue over. So it's really important that you're with counsel, you're disclosing things properly, you're handling situations. So after that conversation, she called the clients and said, you know, I really recommend that you go to RERF. The clients then called her back again and said, you know what, maybe we don't want you to list our property. I think this is an issue and I think that you're going to affect the sale of our property and how much we're going to get on the market for it because of your advice. So now they're coming back sideways towards the real estate professional and now they're accusing. So in that situation, now you really need counsel with an attorney. So what we do in that situation is first of all, transactional legal advice, very important over situations, legal questions, changes in laws that affect real estate transactions. Um, the new NAR um, lawsuit that's happening and all of the changes with that, talk to an attorney, get their legal opinion. Um, if you receive any type of notice, like my agent did this morning, that now the seller's upset and they're threatening that the agent might have opened a can of worms that they said and that their house may not be worth as much, and they're in the San Jose area and they were trying to get top dollar. And in that area, I guess the market's pretty hot right now. So now they're saying that the agent might have messed up a potential sale for them. Those are all accusations and they need to be taken very seriously. And the reason why is because if that's what that client is saying to that agent, first of all, the agent is put on notice. If that client goes and talks to an attorney or there's any text messages or any emails going back and forth, all of that now becomes formal notice. So anything that that agent does, anything they say back to that client, how they handle that situation, you know, it could get them in deeper and deeper, even though maybe they didn't do anything wrong. So at this point, they need to go over to an attorney. Our attorney is going to do a full review of what's going on, and they're going to respond to that client or to that attorney that that client hires. Um, one of the things that we're looking for when clients make accusations is we're looking for them to threaten to take legal recourse, threaten to file a lawsuit, threaten to file a demand for arbitration against the real estate professional. And the reason why is because when those threats are made in the state of California, there's something that can be filed called a demure. And if there's a demure on record and that opposing party goes to file a lawsuit, um, they can't file a lawsuit. They have to file a motion to have a hearing in front of a judge to substantiate that they have cause and evidence to file a lawsuit against that professional. So basically, you can make all the allegations you want. Once you file a lawsuit, you have to defend. 
But if a demur is in place, you can't file a lawsuit. You have to prove that that lawsuit, lawsuit should be in place against that party. So it's very effective. Our attorneys use demurs to get our real estate professionals out of lawsuits. Um, and we have a 99% success rate. So it's really about working with that attorney early on so that now you're not having to defend yourself out of something. Now, say that does lead to a lawsuit and the client has the right to file a lawsuit, right? Or you're just blindsided and you're served a lawsuit. When that happens, that's when the errors and emissions insurance company has first right of refusal that's in place because they're the insurance policy. So you would submit it over to the ENO. The ENO would then uh, determine whether they're going to cover the claim or not. If they're covering the claim, we pay $2,500 of your deductible directly to the ENO insurance attorney on your behalf. If the ENO sends over a reservation of rights letter and they're not covering the claim, that's when you have the right to something called Kumis Council. And Kumis Council is the insured's right to independent counsel if there's a conflict of coverage between the insured and the insurer. So we have attorneys that take those cases on for our clients. Um, I do hear a lot of stories out in the industry where they go to get a Coombs Council attorney and the Coombs Council attorney pays, you know, charges a huge retainer and then billable hours and then you get recovery of fees from the insurance company but they want to get paid at the beginning. Our attorneys, you know, you go to a Kumis Council attorney, they bill the insurance company, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so it's the opposite. So it's really important to know that an attorney can bill you directly. They don't have to bill the insurance company from the very beginning of that. Um, we also handle small claims matters if you're served. You have an hour of attorney's time to prepare your case for a small claims court. They prepare it as though they're representing you, which is really important. So they have all of your documentation in order. Um, they counsel you so that you're well prepared for that hearing because the loss ratio in small claims court is very high. Um, so it's really important that you go in and that you're counseled by an attorney ahead of time. Now, say you were to lose a case in small claims court, we then offer three hours appeal representation where our attorney does represent you and they file the appeal. And then we also handle formal mediation matters. So if you have a situation that comes up where your client went to California Association of Realtors or another formal mediation venue, and they're asking for you to be part of that mediation, we want an attorney to represent you because that attorney is there to represent your best interest. And a lot of times what happens is a settlement agreement will be reached and it'll be drawn up. It's very specific. It's not keeping you out of trouble for any future issues that come up on that property. And it, it could give the client uh, the right to come back over, over, over other issues in the future. So it's really important that you have your own attorney there to represent your best interest and make sure that everything is closed up tight after that mediation. Um, another area that is really important is accusations with regulatory entities um, against your license. It could be a tenant in a property that you're listing. Um, it could be a situation that comes up with the DRE where they file a complaint. You know, you need to have an attorney represent you because this is your license. You can be fined. And other um, entities can contact other entities over your practice. So if you get a HUD complaint, they can contact the Department of Real Estate and let them know what's going on. And then, you know, the DRE can then question your license, your activity, your practice, things like that. So you always want an attorney to represent you. So you have 10 hours of an attorney's time per complaint per issue. Um, one of the things that a lot of agents are really nervous about right now, depending on where you're at in California, um, is, is their past transactions. Because what's happening right now is interest rates are very high, as we all know. And um, when a buyer lives in a home and something they experience goes wrong, they're already paying a very high interest rate. They probably bought that house at a very high price over what the market prices were the last couple of years. So the minute a problem comes up, 
you know, they want to go and they want to talk to an attorney. They don't want to pay out of pocket thousands of dollars to fix a problem. So a lot of agents come to me and they say, you know, I'm not as worried about my transactions moving forward. I have a lot of concern about my transactions because I get calls from clients when they experience issues. Well, it's very important that you have something in place to make sure that all of your past transactions are covered. So that's what we do is we cover all your transaction activity that you've done under Radius Agent Desk Incorporated. So if you have a DRE complaint, a threat, a lawsuit come back from a transaction that you've done previously to your enrollment, you would have coverage on that for any type of legal matter that comes up against your license or in a court. Um, and you have representation with all of the benefits that I've covered under your broker agent benefits. So very important. Now, there are some things that we don't cover. Let's talk about those. The first that we don't cover, once again, is we won't help your buyer or seller sue you or another party. So our attorneys are only there for non-dispute legal advice. The second thing we don't cover under past transactions is we don't cover pre-existing matters. So say you already received a lawsuit, an email from a client, a notice that there was an issue prior to your enrollment or a DRE complaint or a DRE investigators reached out to you, we would consider that pre-existing. Anything that you receive after you're enrolled with us on your past transaction activity is what we cover. So just to make sure that's really clear. Um, we also handle commission matters if it has to do with a principal in a real estate transaction, a buyer or seller, um, and you have the broker agreement or you have the listing agreement and you've performed according to that contract, we will collect a commission from that party for you, but we don't get involved in broker to broker, broker to agent commission matters. And we're not going to help you sue another brokerage. That's the last thing we don't cover is we discourage litigation between real estate professionals. But if you ever need an attorney to represent you because a real estate company on, on the other side of the transaction is named in a lawsuit and they cross complain or they counter sue you on that legal issue, on that lawsuit, you would have representation with our attorneys because we handle everything defense related for you. We just don't help you initiate legal action against other brokers and agents. Those are pretty much the main bulk of the benefits for your license. Um, I'll go ahead and talk about how our, your, um, what the fee is. So our fee is $124 per buyer, per seller, uh, paid at close of escrow. Um, once an agent enrolls in a team, you, your whole team has to enroll, you fill out an enrollment form, and from that point forward, you're enrolled with RERM, and it covers your past, future, closed, and unclosed transaction activities. So say we're not paid on a transaction, and say that seller I was talking about earlier on that bearing wall comes back and has an issue. And they decide that they're going to file a formal complaint against the agent, or they're going to file a lawsuit or send over a threatening letter. All of your representation is in place, even if a transaction doesn't close, because we want to make sure that you're with counsel and you have defense because unclosed transactions turn into situations as well. So the 124 is paid per buyer, per seller that you represent at close of escrow. We do mandate that all of your transactions after you enroll with us are paid at close of escrow, but you can use us as much as you need to. I can't say that enough. So um, I've had situations come up where an agent gets a DRE complaint and then the same clients go and talk to an attorney and there's a threat that comes over regarding that issue or it turns into a lawsuit or they're served a lawsuit. You would have double benefits in that situation. You would have an attorney to represent you on the DRE complaint, and you would also have representation on the threat of suit, deductible coverage if it becomes a lawsuit, or if you're served a lawsuit, or if Huma's counsel if the ENO denies it. So all of our benefits are, um, you can need that, you can use them as much as you need them. Uh, now, how RERM works, is, and I'll go over some better fun stuff in a moment. Um, so I'm not just, you know, sticking to 
all of our ERM's benefits because it's pretty boring, <laughs> but it's necessary. So um, first of all, our ERM, we have a panel of over 800 attorneys that practice, again, in many areas of law to help you, defend you, answer questions, all of our benefits. Um, we don't have the attorneys here in office. We assign it out to the attorney at the law firm to take care of your legal needs. So you can't call up our ERM and just talk to an attorney because we can't house 800 attorneys here through different states, et cetera. So what you would do is you would call our 800 number or you would email legal team at rerm.com. You let us know what you or your client's need is. We send you over a PDF fillable form to complete. Once you do that, we ask you for any documents that the attorney will need to review or see. And then it goes to an attorney and they contact you at a time that their law firm schedules. So that's how our year works. We can work very quickly or the general turnaround time is 48 hours or less if it's not a time sensitive matter. Um, now we do ask that you turn everything over to us. So whether it's a client contacting you and they're just talking about how upset they are that you brought down the desirability of their property based on a, on a bearing wall. They could go talk to an attorney next. So nothing is too small to turn over to us and at least open a file and get counsel with an attorney on you know, how not to respond or respond to that client. So if it does progress, you, we can move forward very quickly with you. So any verbal dispute, written threat of suit, um, demand for mediation, arbitration, lawsuit, small claims court summons for regulatory complaint, or just inquiry, you know, turn all of those over to us so we can, we can assign them to counsel and, you know, be progressive, be early, be preventative, preventative for you. Um, I ask that you always contact the legal service center directly. I am in meetings throughout the day, so I may not respond to you if you have a legal need or your client you know, needs to talk to an attorney and they need to remove contingencies, whatever the matter may be. So I never want to delay your services. And I, I bet you while we're doing this meeting, I probably have a few emails from agents in my box saying, I need to talk to an attorney or this situation has come up and I will delay because I won't respond to you as fast as the legal service center is to get things going. So I ask that you do contact them. It does require that you send over the documents and the form before we send it over to the attorney because attorneys will not give blind legal advice. And if you're talking to an attorney that's giving you blind legal advice, that's pretty scary. They need to see everything that has to do with that legal matter to be able to assess and advise you correctly. So, uh, and then evenings, nights, and weekends, the management team over at Radius has Laura Peterson, our COO cell phone number. So if you were served a lawsuit on a Saturday at your kid's soccer game, I mean, it happens because process servers don't care where they serve you. They just want to get you served so that they get paid the next business day. That's how it works. So you can be served on an evening, a weekend, a holiday. We've had agents served at Christmas. It's just one of those things. If that happens, then you would have Laura Peterson to call and she can put you on the phone with an attorney in minutes. So that's outside of our Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m., 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time business hours. Um, let me go ahead and go back. Um, our attorneys are located throughout Northern and Southern California in many areas. So, uh, you know, depending on where you're practicing real estate, we do have attorneys to support you. Sometimes you might talk to a litigation attorney that's down in Southern California, even though you're in Northern California, just because that's their expertise based off of that situation that might be escalating. And they might be a really good litigation defense attorney. So you might be paired with an attorney that's out of your area. If it's an area specific issue for San Francisco, or another metropolitan area, attorneys charge a much higher fee in those areas. But we have attorneys that practice outside of those areas that know all of the same laws. So sometimes you can be paired with an attorney over a San Francisco question out of San Ramon or Walnut Creek, but they know all the same laws. So just covering that. Um, 
I want to let everybody know that over the last six months, we have had a 10% increase in buyer's remorse lawsuits. And it's because of buying those homes where they're now paying a very high interest rate and they feel like they bought at peak, uh, peak price of that home. And now they're experiencing problems. So the first thing they do is, well, let's file a lawsuit because we don't have the money to fix this or we don't want to come out of pocket. Um, and then the other thing I want to talk about is, so the most common complaints filed against real estate licensees, uh, non-disclosure, failure to disclose, number one, which is misrepresentation of a property, failure to disclose, negligence, intentional concealment, breach of contract, fiduciary duty, and conflict of interest. Um, a lot of things also go into lawsuits that could make you look fraudulent, even though you didn't, you didn't act in any type of fraud. Um, constructive fraud, there's different types of fraud. So really important that if somebody's making allegations against you, you know, the real estate agent is supposed to disclose everything they know about with the property. That's material fact that affects the value. And if you're disclosing everything you know, but the seller knows something and they don't disclose it because they lived in the home. Well, I've lived in my house for 12 years now. You've lived in the home for 12 years. I can tell you I have a binder going on. The pool repair that we did, the upstairs bathroom we have remodeled, the roof that we did in 2015, the flooring, you know, everything that we have done, I have an absolute list and binder of it because I'm going to disclose everything. I feel like the more disclosure that I do, the less opportunity it is for the buyer to try to say that I hid something. You know, a lot of sellers don't think that way. Going back to my client's situation this morning where, you know, they're upset about the agent affecting the desirability of their property and the price that they might get, you know, that really puts the agent in a bad position if they're not wanting to disclose things. So, um, if you're a good agent, your client isn't going to persuade you. You're going to do what is ethically right, and you're going to do everything you can to protect your liability at the end of the day. And we want to partner with you and make sure that we're here to support you with our attorneys in doing that. So that's pretty much everything that I have. I really appreciate your time today. Um, if you choose to enroll with our ERM, please... Um, send over the enrollment form. I'll make sure that Isla has that. Do I say that right? I apologize if I don't. It's, it's Isla, but that's, yeah. you're not the first person to, to have a little bit of a mix up. It's, it's totally fine. So I'll, I'll make sure that Isla sends that over and um, I appreciate your time today. Oh, do you have a question? Or are you just saying yeah. hi? A little both. <laughs> um, I was the marketing packet, I think in the beginning, like that sheet, I'm on the website and I was just looking for that so I can kind of include that with, um, you know, a buyer counseling session. Yeah, that one. Where would I find that? So I went on the website. Once somebody is enrolled with us, you get a welcome email sent to you with this document and word that you can customize. Um, and then it also tells you how to contact the RERM Legal Service Center. So once you're enrolled with us, that's when we provide that. Okay. And um, El Elo, is that something that we automatically through RADIUS do, or is there additional steps I need to do to enroll? So, so um, that would actually be a question for our brokerage experience team. That's not something that I handle personally, but I can get that information for you. Um, Heidi, are any of these materials able, um, available for distribution after this room? Uh, yeah, I can email this over to you and then you okay. can share with everybody that was on this meeting or anybody else that's interested. Absolutely. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I appreciate your time today. Um, okay. Tell other people if you think our ERM is a valuable service. Um, I know after being in this industry for over 20 years, attorneys are very expensive. And whenever you go to hire an attorney after the fact, that's when you know it gets more expensive because there's more documents to review. They're gonna have to spend more time um, representing you. 
Um, and ENO is good, but there are a lot of things that are not covered by ENO, as well as license things that have to do with complaints. So that's where our ERM, we are your attorneys that want to support you and provide representation. And you can use us unlimited. I can't say that enough. So um, 